All right, welcome back to Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here on the Rollo Insurance Studio. Our next guest was a coach at Virginia Tech and also is the ESPN basketball analyst that you see all the time on the tube. Seth Greenberg here on Tech Sags. Coach Greenberg, how are you, sir? Doing great. Doing great. Just working my back, way back from New York City to do some work back at ESPN after doing Get Up and uh, First Take. Well, uh, let's start off, at least for us, Texas A&M. A weird team to kind of... Look, I am not surprised they're in the tournament. They can beat anybody in the country. Unfortunately, they can lose to anybody in the country. But uh, what makes this version of A&M, this team that's been playing down the stretch, you think a team that not only was worthy of the tournament, but a team that can certainly take down some of those top teams? Making shots. I mean, let's face it. I mean, like, Texas A&M plays as hard as any team in the country. Uh, they can be disruptive at times defensively. Uh, they have the ability to get to the free throw line. You know, Wade Taylor was a preseason player of the year in the conference. He's starting to play like a player of the year. Uh, you know, Bootsy Radford is is starting to be more consistent. Uh, they always rebound the basketball. They always defend. They're extremely athletic in their front court. We all know those things. But your your best players have to be your best players. And uh, and then other guys have you know have emerged. And I, I think that's been the big difference of them down the stretch consistency in what you're doing offensively, the quality of the shots, and then, you know, making the, you know, the big time shots down the stretch. And what, you know, for example is the Kentucky game. I mean, the consistency of what you guys did offensively along with, you know, being just disruptive enough defensively is, is the key. And then just crushing people when you worry about 40% of your misses. All right. That's, I mean, those extra possessions, it's hard to quantify really just how intimidating and how dominating that can be in the course of a game. Seth, you mentioned Wade Taylor. Obviously, we know all the accolades, the player that he has grown into. This year, he had a little bit of a lull right when they went in that five-game losing streak. It seems to me, though, offensively, that might have been the best thing that happened to this team because as opposed to just watching him do what he does – Others had to step up. The solo Washingtons had to step up. Boots is always going to do the Boots thing. But I feel like it made the offense well, more well-rounded. Did you see that? Yeah, I think so. There's no doubt about it. I, I, thought, I thought Washington, his development as the season went along, I thought was actually really, really impressive. Um, and again, yeah, just some, uh, someone else have to step up. But you've also got to be inclusive and get those guys involved. You know, I mean, I think, that, I think that's that's the biggest thing is that Look, you got to pick your sides. I call it being selectively aggressive. Like guys like Boots and guys like Wade, they've got to be selectively aggressive. But the game's on the line, the start of the game, coming out of timeouts, uh, start of the second half. Those guys got to make statements. But then they got to, you want guys to continue to defend and continue to rebound and continue to do all the dirty work. You've got to get other guys, you know, involved. I mean, I think, you know, like you look at tech whether it's Manny, whether it's Wade, whether it's Boots. I mean, they got guys that are coming at you, all right? They're making you react to them. And that's the mindset you need to have in the NCAA tournament, not hoping it'll happen, going out and making it happen. And they got guys that'll make it happen. Now, look, big question will be, how's the game going to be officiated for the whole NCAA tournament, to be honest with you? I mean, you know, the Big 12 is a very physical league. You play Houston in the second round. You've already played them once. You know, you know what I'm talking about. How that game's going to be officiated will be interesting. So, uh, but I think that they've got a good draw because one, they're familiar with what Houston's about. They understand what that's about. If they can get through this first round game, then all of a sudden, you know, they've got a chance to, you know, be one of those teams that whoa, all of a sudden, how do these guys get, you know, in the Elite Eight? Well, how do these guys get in the Sweet Sixteen? Let me let me ask you about Buzz Williams, a guy that you you know his his history. He obviously coached at Virginia Tech for a few years. Just what do you think about the way? His team seem to be better when it comes to a tournament setting. Oh, but you know, Buzz is Buzz. He's a little different. We all know that. Uh, best risk coach in America. He's taken over for Jay Wright. I don't know why you would sweat through all those nice suits, but that's another question. <laughs> uh, but I think what Buzz does a great job of is he does a great job of preparation. What you're going to give, what you're going to take away. In the NCAA tournament, it's about opposing your identity on a game. Any tournament, impose your identity. Decide what you're going to give, what you're going to take away. You can't take away everything. But if you can impose your identity and get the game at a pace that you want to play, not your opponent wants to play, that you want to play, get the game where they're reacting to your style of play, your identity, that's a problem 
for your opponent. And I, I think Buzz does a really good job of that. We're starting our prep here on Nebraska, a team that shoots a lot of threes. What can you tell us about them and, and what you've seen on, on film? Yeah, they're very good. Very, very well coached. Really ex- execute offensively. Uh, the communicator has got unlimited range. Rick Mast is a front court player that uh, is a hard matchup because he'll invert. You're going to have to go to him on the perimeter. He's a, he's a short roll, pick and pop, uh, can be a playmaker up there, can also go down to the block and score. Uh, the Williams kid is very, very active and hard playing. They've improved dramatically defensively dramatically defensively, not a great defensive rebounding team, but they've improved dramatically defensively. Uh, the thing about their offense, though, is they, they have a very complete offense. They're a terrific passing team, a terrific spacing team, a lot of misdirection. So, you know, that's a game that, you know, Buzz is going to say, all right, how can we disrupt the rhythm of their offense? I mean, really, you know, that's, that, that's going to be a big thing in this game. How can we disrupt the rhythm of their offense? Now they struggle. They're two twenty in defensive rebounding percentage. That's not that's not great. Uh, so they've got to they've got to do a better job of rebounding the basketball. Uh, they're going to have to you know A and M's going to have to defend the three. I mean they're going to shoot forty percent of their shots from three point line. So but the ball pressure, the switching, uh, the uh, maybe going zone at that command like Buzz I know likes to do. Uh, you know mixing up and trying to keep them off balance is going to be really important. If a and is fortunate enough to get past Nebraska, they'll have uh, potentially Houston if they get through Longwood, which I think they would. What do you think about the job Kelvin Sampson has done to not only turn around the University of Houston, but make them every year a team that can make the Final Four? Consistency. I mean, but it's, it's consistency in everything they do. It's how they defend. It's how they're going to defend ball screens, how they're going to double the post, how they're, the pressure they're going to put on you. Uh, the one question is going to be they can get stuck offensively. We saw it against Iowa State. Now, Iowa State is a great defensive team. Iowa State, when you get it to the side, they don't want to come back. Uh, Iowa State is a team that has length and has numbers. I thought Iowa State wore them down from the start of the game. Very reliant on Jamal Shedd. We know how good he is. Uh, might be the best two-way guard in America. Uh, L.J. Cryer, I think, is their X factor because when he makes shots, they're good. When he doesn't make shots, they're bad. So I'm sure, like Buzz, that's going to be a focal point. And then, you know, Roberts has improved offensively around the basket, but you got to make them defend in the paint because they have no depth in their front court. So, uh, but what what Calvin's done has been phenomenal. Uh, really, it's been impressive. And uh, the culture of that program, they are Villanova esque in terms of their culture. On the same side of the bracket, Duke is a, a four seed in this one. A team that will potentially end up in, in Dallas there in the uh, in the round of uh, 32 to 16, excuse me. Just what do you think about Duke this year and how they put their season together? Yeah, they've not been very consistent. Uh, they, they haven't been as physical and tough. Their hot tunnels haven't been as tight. They haven't played with as much force. They don't like it when it gets overly physical. Uh, Filipowski has not been consistent the way he needs to be. Now, having said that, their perimeter game could be Really, really good uh, in that, you know, you're talking about Jeremy Roach, an experienced player. Jared McCain, who can really make shots. Two guys, you know, Tyrese Proctor's got to be a little bit more assertive. Caleb Foster being back and healthy, if he is, will help him in that he's a big guard that can defend. But it's up front. It's up front. Mark Mitchell's got to be good. And surely, Kyle tolopowski has got to be really good. Is there a team that uh, you think can surprise people? Obviously, every year there's a team in the NCAA tournament, but maybe somebody who's kind of flying under the radar that you better watch out because these matchups kind of play out to their strengths. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there, are, there are always teams, you know, you're looking for flyers, you're looking for guys that, you know, can upset the uh, apple cart and all that. If you look at the season this past season, uh, you know, that's been a microcosm of the, 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 the conference tournaments were a microcosm of the regular season. Ranked teams losing on ranked teams, teams winning on the, you know, coming up and playing. I'd say that Oregon has a legitimate shot of making a move. I like Oregon. Uh, I'm that they follow. He's back. Gives him an inside player. Their defense, since he's been back the last four games, has been great. They could become a little bit of a Cinderella. Uh, I think the SEC is going to have a great showing in the tournament is what I do think. I think across the board, I think Florida's playing well, and then is playing well. Kentucky will be just fine. Tennessee's got to find their way back, but I think 
they will. Um, I think the SEC, I, you know, we talk about the SEC in the Big 12. I think the SEC has a chance to make a statement in the uh, NCAA tournament. And I guess we'll close out with UConn. I mean, we saw what they did last year, and they came out of nowhere. This year, they're not coming out of nowhere. No, they're the most consistent team in college basketball. They can play big. They can play small. They can play fast. They can play slow. They're relentless defensively. They protect the rim. And offensively, they play differently because of their ball and their people movement. So they're the real deal. They are the real deal. That is Seth Greenberg, ESPN. Seth, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Let's do it again. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.